everybody. Um, so we're going to get started. Um, once again, thank you guys for coming to our webinar where uh, Gabe and I, or mostly Gabe, but I'll be here too, um, are going to show you a little bit about uh, a really cool Ruby library called Sonic Pi. It allows you to programmatically generate music. Um, I'm Avi, by the way. Um, Gabe. Yeah, so uh, feel free to tweet along with us at Flatiron School. Um, and uh, I just want to tell you guys a little bit about me and Gabe first, uh, show you guys a little bit about uh, Flatiron School, who we are and what we do. Um, share with you a little bit about the history of code from a really early perspective. And then Gabe's going to um, build you guys uh, some, show you some Sonic Pi and kind of how to think about taking a song you like and reverse engineering it and expressing it through code. Um, and so we're going to learn a little bit about music and a little bit about uh, Ruby and uh, some programming methodology at the same time, which will be fun. And then we'll just wrap up. Um, we're going to, we always record these, so uh, we'll be posting it to YouTube. You'll also be getting an email follow up with some discounts and uh, a link to the recording. Um, and Gabe's got actually a great blog series about um, how we kind of, the genesis of this, uh, of generating the song. Almost finished. Almost. So yeah, so you know, follow along, have fun with it. And uh, with that, let's get started. So I'm Avi. Um, I'm one of the founders of Flatiron School. Uh, we've been around for around four and a half years. Um, I've been programming professionally for like 15 years. Um, this is my second company. Um, I wrote a software patent for my first company, which is kind of cool. And uh, you know, I like to speak at conferences, uh, hang out with uh, Rebecca McGough and Carly Claus, and do some how to program too, and uh, you know, fly planes because that's pretty fun also. And uh, so I'm Gabe. I'm a student uh, in the Learn Verified program here at Flatiron. Uh, I have kind of a winding path to get here. I've been interested in music for a long time. I actually I interned at a jazz radio station when I was in high school um, out in California. Uh, then I went off to school, off to college, and I studied human rights. Uh, obviously, not much uh, between that and, and music. But then I worked at Human Rights Watch, thought I was going to go to law school, went to a corporate law firm, and realized, no, I want to have fun with my life. I want to actually do something and, and create awesome pieces of code that like have a function. and you know, instead of sitting in boardrooms all day. Um, so yeah, so then I, I ended up here at Learn Verified. I love the program. If you guys have questions about it, about what it's like to be a student, uh, you can send those in, and I'll try to answer them at the end. Uh, it's it's great. I mean, it's it's a program where it's self-paced, and uh, it's, it's engaging. You know, you can go as fast or as slow as you want. It has a great community of support. Uh, so if I don't understand something, I can just just ping off a question and you'll instantly have five, ten people who are trying to help you. Uh, it's great. It's been a wonderful experience so far. So yeah, any questions, go ahead and ask. Um, yeah, and actually what's really cool too, um, so I've been playing with Sonic Pi and doing these kind of music demos for a while. Um, and then I think when we did our first one, Gabe was actually yeah. one of you just watching in the audience and was kind of so inspired by us, by what Sonic Pi could do that he started kind of tweeting at me and being like, hey, I built this riff and I built that. <laughs> And at this point, I think Gabe knows way more about Sonic Pi than I do, um, which is awesome. And I guess kind of like one of the things I love about teaching is kind of sharing my passion and inspiring students. So it was really just a few months ago where Gabe was actually on the other end of this webinar learning the basics of Sonic Pi and Ruby. Yeah. And now has been progressing through our curriculum. Um, and we kind of invited him to actually demo some of the stuff he's built because it's been pretty impressive. And I, I think one of, the, one of the coolest things about Sonic Pi, too, and one of the reasons it was such a great introduction to coding for me is that I had – like a very scant background in coding. I'd taken a, a, an intro class a few years ago, and I had a, you know, a background a long time ago in music production. So, like, by no means an expert in either of these things. And Sonic Pi, you know, by by going through the progressions of making this song, trying to recreate the postal service, it helped me improve my my music knowledge. It helped me improve my my Ruby knowledge. And it was just it, it's it's such an easy interface that anyone can do this really. And, and I mean, I'll prove it to you. Cool. Um, so yeah, we're at the Flatiron School. Um, we basically teach people how to program, um, how to find kind of passion and love in this craft, and then help them get a job. As I said, we've been around for four years. Our programs are either 12 weeks in person or self-paced online, which are really fun. Um, that's kind of what we've been doing. And uh, you know, for the most part, we mostly just love sharing um, uh, our passion for code with people. Um, cool. And as I said, we like to get people jobs, and we're very career-centric. So most of our full-time or online programs are really about taking you from, you know, early beginner to zero experience in code um, to the point of employability. Um, and yeah, as I said, we really love programming. Uh, you know, I always think that uh, code is kind of a medium, and we mostly experience it through these ideas of apps, but 
there's really, it's just a medium for modeling phenomenon or expressing models or ideas. Um, so whether that's generating, you know, graphs and data science or data journalism, programming music, uh, or building apps, I think there's a lot of different ways in which you can impact code, uh, impact um, uh, the world of code. Um, so yeah, let's go back in time. Because the idea of building machines that could do things for us um, kind of started with this guy, Charles Babbage. He basically built this big calculator called a difference engine, um, which uh, could solve one kind of math equation uh, so that you'd kind of represent the variables in the equation as weights in this machine, and you'd unbalance the machine by turning that crank, and then you'd solve the equation, and it was a pretty cool machine. Um, and then Otto Lovelace comes along, and she hears about Babbage's machine and gets really inspired by it. And she kind of conceives of this idea that uh, why not build a machine that can be taught to do anything? Um, she calls it an analytical engine. And she's kind of conceiving of this, this kind of piece of technology we'll create that we can actually program to do other things. And she called it a science of operations. And I always really loved that term for what it would be like to teach these computers or teach these machines how to do things. As opposed to programming or computer science, she described it as the science of operations. Um, and there's another program named Edgar Dijkstra that once said, that calling programming computer science is like calling surgery knife science, and that's entirely about the tool and not the craft. Um, and I always like that term, science of operations. That feels more like what I'm doing when I'm programming is I'm breaking down an instruction set into a simple operation and then showing it to the computer to follow. Um, and the coolest thing about Otto Lovelace is, again, this is like 1840. She's writing these letters to Babbage, and she kind of prophesizes that supposing, for instance, that the fundamental relations, the pitch sounds, and the science of harmony and musical composition were susceptible to such expression adaptations, the engine might compose elaborate and scientific pieces of music of any degree of complexity or extent. So just a little less than 200 years ago, she basically predicts electronic music, um, that we will be able to break down the um, kind of physics of, of, of phonetics, of sound, and then it would be not a problem to teach a computer or a machine to generate those tones and those, the, those sounds um, and those waves. Um, and that's actually what we're going to do today, which is pretty cool. Um, so with that, um, I'm going to let Gabe take over and uh, show you guys some Sonic Pi. So forth. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. I guess. Um, yeah. So uh, actually, if you guys want to look up something really cool, uh, about two or three months ago, uh, I forget where this guy's located, somewhere in Northern Europe, but uh, a guy created a basically that analytical engine, or the, the Babbage calculator that produces sound. It's called the, the Winter Gotten, I think. Um, I'll, I'll make sure that link gets sent around in the, uh, uh, the kind of the postmortem on this. But yeah, it's really cool. And it just operates, he operates it with a crank, and marbles fall down and create sounds. It's really cool. All right, but that's not what we're here for. We're here to learn how to make the opening to uh, the Postal Service's Such Great Heights. So let's, uh, let's listen to that quickly. Sure, you all know this pretty popular song. Yeah, so this synthesizer right here, it's actually two synthesizers. This is what we're going to be creating today. It's going to sound pretty similar to this. Close enough, we'll say. <laughs> All right, so we're going to make that in Sonic Pi, and you all should have gotten a link to download Sonic Pi uh, in the introductory email to this when you signed up. If you didn't download it, don't worry. We're going to go through this pretty slowly, and you can go back and download it later, and then watch the YouTube and code along. So it'll be great. So Sonic Pi is, uh, like Avi said, it's it's an extension of the Ruby library. So it has Ruby has all of these. Uh, these kind of methods in it, right, that are that come packaged with Ruby, where you can you can do very simple things right out of the box without creating anything new. So if I want to uh, if I want to say something, right, like I can use a puts method, and I can say puts, hi guys, how's it going? And then if I play that, Ruby is going to print out over here. Oops, sorry, you can't see my finger when I point. Uh, right over here, hi guys, how's it going? So Ruby has uh, those kind of simple global methods that you can use. Sonic Pi extends that, and so Sonic Pi has methods like play. And if I say play 60, that's going to play a middle C, which is like the very middle note on a piano. And you can press play. 
don't know if you guys can hear that. Yep. Yeah, okay. So you can play 60. You can, uh, you can send Sonic Pi other arguments, like if you know the note in like the A, B, C, D regular notation format, um, you, can, uh, you can type, you know, play C4, and it'll play the same note. You can give it, uh, let's see, play chord, let's play a C major, oops. So you can play chords in this as well. You can do anything. The, really, the sky is the limit with this program. Anything you can do in GarageBand, in Logic, uh, in Ableton, any, any programs you have that you can create music in, you can do it in Sonic Pi. I'd say that Sonic Pi is a little bit less feature-rich than those other ones. Like You're not going to have quite the vernacular of, of synths. You're not going to have the same number of effects processors. But you can create some really cool things in Sonic Pi. Um, one of the coolest things, I know obvious given this, uh, uh, this example before, but this guy named uh, Sebastian Renou, uh, I think he's French, he came up with Aerodynamic, the Daft Punk song, in Sonic Pi, and the way he created it is he took the original sample that Daft Punk used, which is, actually I have no idea what kind of music it is, but it's like, it's like a one or two second sample, really small, and what Daft Punk did is they took that and they messed around with it, they, they lengthened it, you know, they stretched it, they shortened it, and they created this entire awesome song out of it. Um, and you can do that in Sonic Pi. You can import outside samples. You can use, uh, so Sonic Pi has an entire sample library as well. Uh, and you can call those by doing sample and then a colon with um, the sample name after that. And Sonic Pi, so Sam Aaron, the guy who created this, made it super easy to use. Everything pops up. So I can say sample and then space, and then it gives me this list of samples that you can use. So let's do, yeah, let's make a nice bass drum. And then we can do, uh, so the way that you sleep, or the way that you, um, that you separate notes in Sonic Pi, so like in a, when you read sheet music, or when, you, when you're listening to a song, all the notes aren't just played at once, right? Like there's a note, and then a rest, and then another note, and so on. And so the way you do that in Sonic Pi is you give it a sleep value. So we can say sleep one, and then we can call another sample, and let's call a snare drum this time, and then sleep one. So you hear that? Really simple. Um, it's just it's it's such an intuitive interface for doing this. I mean, I like Avi said, I've been doing this for two, maybe three months, and have, like, I have small amount of experience using Logic. I wouldn't, like, I'm definitely not an expert in anything, and I was able to pick this up pretty well. You can, you can definitely do this, and you can start creating music today. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's make some postal service. So, the, the easiest way to do this, the way that, the way that I landed on doing uh, this song is I thought for a second about what kind of uh, what kind of song is going to be easy to reproduce using Sonic Pi? And so Sonic Pi, like, like any other uh, program on a computer, it does computer things really well. It does repetition really well, right? It makes synthesized sounds really well. It doesn't play, uh, you know, it can't sing. It can't come up with, like, the sound of an oboe that well. But synthesizers, perfect. So uh, I, I settled on, on the Postal Services song, and then I went to Google and just typed in Postal Service, uh, Such Great Heights, uh, I think it was just sheet music, and it, it comes up. You know, there are a million different repositories online for where you can get sheet music. Um, so yeah, so I pulled the sheet music for this, and if you can't read sheet music, it's really not a problem. We can just, we can look at this like a sequence of patterns, right? So uh, this top line, so let me make this large. <clears throat> So the top line is the one that we're going to be coding first, right? And that is that introductory synth in uh, in such great heights. It goes dun 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 dun, and that's it. Like all you need to do is look at this and see that the notes are the same length, right? So it's like it's a very structured pattern. It's just sixteen eighth notes. That's that's what these are. 
and we can just we can code that out in Sonic Pi just one by one. So we can take the first note. And by the way, again, if you can't read music, there are a million programs out there that will take sheet music, which is usually uh, I think it's a music XML file, or they will take a MIDI file. And a lot of electronic music, a lot of uh, like sheet music, and a lot of guitar tabs and such are saved as MIDI files. Um, which is musical instrument digital interface, and it's just it's this protocol that kind of saves all of the information about the music, about like every single note in, in a piece, and it'll save the pitch. So like whether it's a low pitch or a high pitch, right? It'll save the amplitude. It'll save any effects that get thrown on it. Um, it'll it'll give like as as best as MIDI can do, it'll give a representation of what it should sound like. So if it's a piano sound, that's easy. If it's a really complicated synthesizer, it's hard, but MIDI will try. The point is, there are so many programs where you can take one of these MIDI files and open it up, and it might look like this, it might look like a series of values, but you'll be able to uh, you know, hover over the note or click on it, or, or you know, it, it'll give you some representation of how, uh, what pitch it is. And you can just take that and put it into Sonic Pi. So like this one, for example, uh, this is obviously just a, an image of it, but if this were in, uh, like Muse Score is one that I use, if this were in one of those programs, you could hover over this note and it would say F4. This is an F4 note. Um, I think it's 69 is the, the MIDI value. Sonic Pi. Sorry, guys. There we go. <clears throat> so we can do play 69. It'll give us that F4 sound. We can do play F4. Oops, that wasn't right. OK, I guess it's not 69. It's, it's somewhere around there. <laughs> but anyway, F4 is the note that we're looking for. So uh, Sonic Pi actually defaults to the fourth octave. Uh, so we don't need to put the 4 on the end of this. We can just do play F. And that'll give us an F note. Uh, in the middle octave of the of a, of a piano. So our next note is a C. Is there an easy way to flip between? Um, uh, yeah, just hit my tab. It'll. I did that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, okay. So this next note over here is a C. Now the C in the fourth octave is going to be down here below F. So we know that this is one octave above. So this is F4 and then a C5. So let's go back and C5. And we need to put the 5 on there because if we don't, it'll think this is C4 and it'll be lower. So this will well, playing at the same time because we didn't sleep. But if we put a sleep value in, then the second note's going to be lower. That's not what we want. Yeah, We want it to go higher. Perfect. So let's just let's stick with uh, one for our sleep values for now. We can change that later. Let's go back and grab the third note, which again we're back down to F. So that's again an F four. We can do it like that. We can do it like that. Either way. Okay. So there's our first three notes, but. You can probably tell this is really slow. <laughs> so the way uh, that we set a tempo in Sonic Pi is by using the use BPM um, marker at the top. So I know that the, uh, the BPM for such great heights is 175, which means in every um, uh, sorry in every minute there are going to be 175 beats. So Sonic Pi defaults to 60, which is just one beat every second. And 175 is going to be, you know, what, almost three times as fast. Yeah, so that's that's a lot better. It's still a little slow though, and the reason is that Sonic Pi uh, sleep one means sleep for one beat, and if we wanted to sleep for one beat, that'd be great. If that were a quarter note, um, like down here, these these ones without the stem on the top, these are quarter notes, and so this is see the time signature over here this is turning into kind of a music 101 lesson, but. Uh, the time signature means that there are four beats per measure, and each one is a quarter note, right? So one beat, two beat, three beats, four beats. Up here, we have eight instead. So each of these is half of a beat. So instead of using sleep one for one beat, we're going to use sleep 0 0.5 for 
for uh, for half of a beat. Yeah, that sounds much better. All right. So if we uh, if we keep coding out the rest of this, you see that the next one is another F and then a C and then an F. So we can just copy and paste what we just did. Start to sound pretty good. <laughs> and then the next two are an F and then a C. So it's you know, if you don't, if you if you don't want to think of it as like C and F, if that's confusing, you can just think of it as like the low notes and the high notes, because we can see there are five low notes here and three high notes in these first eight, and then it's going to be the same here: five low notes and three high notes in the second eight. So let's just grab. Let's see what did we say? It was low and then high, so F and then C. Okay, so that's our first uh, first measure. And second measure is almost the same. You can see it goes low, high, low, low, high, low again. Same here. So these six are repeated. But then instead of going uh, lower and then higher, it goes higher and then lower. So we got to flip those last two around. Let's copy the whole thing. These are the first eight notes again. And uh, we can comment this out too. So let's say. Our second measure. Okay. Let's throw this on here just so we don't get confused. All right. So we have to flip these last two around so that it goes high and then low. Okay. Okay. So if we uh, if we play this, it should be the first two bars, which is like the first kind of riff from uh, from the synthesizer that we're creating. Awesome, sounds pretty cool. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's see. So this is this is a great way to do it. This is a great way when you're just starting out. Uh, you know, if you want to just take sheet music or take like a list of notes. And create a Sonic Pi song out of it. Do this, you know, play, sleep, play, sleep. It's very intuitive. It's simple. Uh, this is like this is the basic functionality of this program. And this actually, by the way, Sonic Pi started as a teaching tool for Ruby. So this guy Sam Aaron, who created it uh, at Cambridge, said, "I think kids would love to learn how to go to music." And he was he was talking about me as well then. Um, and uh, and he, so he created this very simple synthesizer for the Raspberry Pi, which is this like little tiny computer. And they distributed them to all these kids at uh, uh, at local schools in England, and the kids loved it. And they created awesome projects. There's, I think, you know, a, another link that I'll I'll uh, have included in the, uh, the postmortem is these music videos that people created using. Uh, Sonic Pi on Raspberry Pis. They are just they're the most inventive things you've seen. All right, so this is great, right? So it's it's uh, it's a bit long form, and if you have to code 16 notes like we just did, it's fine. If you have to code a thousand notes, it's not fine. This is going to take way too long. And so one of the things we can do is we can create methods. Like remember, I said uh, one of the simplest things in Ruby you can do is you can put you can, you can write puts and then a string, like puts and then a sentence. And Ruby will interpret that as, okay, whoever typed this wants me to print out to the console this message. So that's, that's, a, that's a Ruby method that is like a core part of the Ruby library. Sonic Pi has these other methods, right? Play, sleep, these are core Sonic Pi methods. But we can actually create our own methods that will allow us to kind of extract uh, or kind of abstract pieces of the song that get repeated. And so instead of typing play F4, play C5 uh, with the sleep methods, we can actually just create a uh, our own method. You know, let's, let's do it right now. So you <laughs> type. So you use the, the def keyword, which means defined, right? So use the def keyword, and then let's call it, um, let's call it FC. So this is going to be 
our own method, uh, our own you know uh, kind of customization of Sonic Pi that is going to play an F note, sleep for 0.5, uh, 0.5 beats, play a C note, sleep for another 0.5 beats, and then end. So this is going to be the simplest method you ever write. We can actually, you know what? Let's just copy and paste because. All right, so the way that you create these methods is you, you use the def keyword, and then it should be indented, just to kind of show you that uh, this is the, the body of the method. And then you finish it with an end, right? And so what we've just done is we've, we've made this f underscore c uh, kind of a keyword that Sonic Pi is now going to interpret as play f4, sleep 0 0.5, play c5, sleep 0 0.5. So if I, I'm going to comment out the rest of this so that we don't hear it. Okay. So if I just type here F underscore C and press play, Ruby is going to read this, like Ruby through Sonic Pi is going to read this, and it's going to play F4, sleep 0 0.5, play C5, sleep 0 0.5. Just like that. So really simple. So that takes care of, uh, let's go back to our notes. So we, we now have a method called fc that does, uh, that plays a low note, an f, and then a high note, a c. So right here, we see we can use that method here and replace our text, uh, or our, our, like our long form code. We can use it here, here, and so on. So you can see we're already going to be able to get rid of a lot of code um, by replacing the long form with our very short little method. So we're going to have uh, one FC and then a bare F note. So instead of having a bare F note, we can create another method, and let's just call it F. And in this method, we're just going to have it play F4, and then, oops, and then sleep 0 0.5, and then F. And so uh, what we can do now is we can go back through our code here, uncomment at all. Commenting in, in Sonic Pi, in Ruby, and coding in general, just uh, it, it tells the computer to not interpret that code. So when you put a, uh, put a hashtag in front of this, it grays it out, and it won't play it. So let's go back through here. And so we can replace this first bit which was just F4, sleep 5, uh, sleep 0 0.5, C5, sleep 0 0.5 with FC. And then we can replace this with an F. And then FC, because it's two notes, and then F, C. And here, let's just, let's leave the last bit for now, and we can just play through this and make sure that that, uh, that we're doing it correctly. So it should sound exactly like it did before. Where we see FC, it's the equivalent of, again, F4, sleep, C5. And when we see F, it's just an F note. Just... Seem to have lost sound for a second. <laughs> it's playing. Oh, you can hear it? Let's just copy it all and try restarting. So yeah, so just to keep talking about methods a little bit. Um, oh, there you go. Okay, it's back. <laughs> Had a little uh, audio failure there. Um, so when I when I created the the entire score to such great heights, it was I think. I think it was about 700 lines the first time I did it, which is a ton of code, right? That's, I mean, right now we've we've written like 30. Yeah, we've written 40. So 700 lines, um, you know, almost like 18 times or so what we've done right now. That was using methods. If I had done it just writing out the notes, you know, writing out play F4, sleep 0 0.5 for however many thousand notes there are, it would have been, I don't know, what, you know, it would have been two lines of code for every note. So there are 2,000 notes. We're going to have 4,000 lines of code, which is just, that's 
it's silly. <laughs> um, so by abstracting uh, patterns, by abstracting repeated sections of the song, we can make it much uh, more streamlined, we can make it more efficient, and it's a lot easier for us to read. You know, instead of reading, uh, like if, you know, if we look at this part of the code, if you just look at that and it's not playing, I mean, it's kind of difficult to see what that sounds like. Just trying to, uh, the cursor had gone away. All right, cursor's back. Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's it's kind of difficult to kind of visualize, or you know, in your mind's eye, what this sounds like. You know, play F four, sleep zero point five. I don't I don't really know what that means. It's easier for me at least to just look at this and say, okay, F C F F C F F C. That's those are just notes. I can I can I can visualize that a lot more easily. And look, it took us what three characters, four characters, eight. Took us 11 characters to write that whole thing, whereas down here, this is a lot more than 11. So let's uh, let's continue abstracting this out. So this is uh, let's see F4. Let's see if I can replace this again with an FC. F, FC. And then here we have CF. So let's, um, you know what, actually, I messed that up. Because we can just make this FC and end with an F. So this is going to sound the same. I'm, I'm going to play it, and then we'll go back and look at the sheet music and just kind of see how this played out. Right, so it sounds exactly like it did before. It just looks a lot more streamlined. Okay, we have a question yeah. about skipping lines. Sure. Is it just to make it easier to read, or what's the purpose? Yeah, yeah, so great question. So um, I could have this all in a row like this. You don't have to skip any lines. Um, there's actually kind of a quirk with Sonic Pi where Sonic Pi cares about how many lines you have just because it has to send the data from Sonic Pi to your um, whatever, like the, the piece of your, your audio card, I guess. Um, and so if you have a very long song, it actually helps to not skip lines because you can make the code compressed and it'll make it a little bit easier on Sonic 5. But in general, no, it doesn't matter. Like, it could, you could space this out however the heck you want. Um, you could put spaces in front of the lines. It, it really doesn't matter. White space, Sonic 5 doesn't care about Ruby. Doesn't, Ruby doesn't care about white space. Yeah, Ruby doesn't care about white space. Um, so if I, if I do this, oops, the end will help. If I do that and press play, it'll sound exactly the same. And actually, when I pressed play, Sonic Pi went and corrected everything for me. So, <laughs> um, yeah, but yeah, white space does not matter. I was, I was kind of doing it by uh, measure. So, like, this is our first measure up here, and then this is our second measure. But it doesn't, uh, it doesn't have any effect on the uh, the playback of the code. Let's go back here. So, what we did is we created one method that takes these two notes. One method that uh, accounts for this one, again, up or down up, and then just down, and then down up, down up, down, down up, down up, down, and that's it. We just we took those 16 notes and uh, split them into two different measures, and then uh, just abstracted the, the notes out. So abstracted instead of saying play uh, F4, rest or sleep, play C5, we just like kind of squish that down into three letters that represent the same thing. And the way we represented that, the way we kind of make that um, that connection is by using the define method, the def method, and uh, creating our own little special customized Ruby method. So yeah, um, that's that's a great way to do it. Uh, another great way to do it in Sonic Pi is that Sonic Pi has more than just the play method. So Sonic Pi, the, Sam Aaron, when he was creating this, he thought, hmm, you know, people are probably going to want to play patterns, um, and they're going to want to have control over the timing of those patterns. And so what he did is he created a play pattern timed method. And this is a, a kind of a, uh, a more complicated version of the play method, where when you press, when you, when you type out a play method and give it the argument, give it that, that F4 argument, 
it plays that one note. And what you can do with play pattern timed is you can give play pattern timed two arguments. Actually, it requires two arguments. The first argument is uh, it's a programming concept called an array. And an array is basically just a list, right? So uh, right here, you know, in our, in our FC method, we have two notes, right? We have an F4 note and we have a C5 note. We can represent that just like we did as two separate notes, or we can make it into a list, right? We could just say F4 and comma C5. And, uh, and then the second argument that this requires is another array. And in this array, it wants the timing values. So it wants the sleep values. Uh, every sleep value for this is going to be 0 0.5, and so we can just uh, use the one uh, sleep value there, and Sonic Pi is smart enough to know that it should repeat that, it should iterate that for every value uh, in the notes array. Um, if, we, I mean, if you really want, you can have one sleep value for every note. If you do that, it'll sound the same. So let's comment all this out so we don't hear it. And we're going to play this, and you should just hear those first two notes. Perfect. So if we want to make a little triplet, we can add the third note in there. And then we have... Beautiful. So all we're going to do now is just go back through and add each note, each of those first 16 notes, into this first array. Um, so it goes F4, C, that F. C. So it goes F C F F C F F C. Okay, so if we play this, we should hear that first measure. Beautiful. And you can actually, and to go again with the uh, the spacing question, you can split this array onto two lines. So we can do our first measure up top. Comment that out. Let's see, the second one is FC. Copy that. Let's see, and then instead of going uh, FC, it ends with CF, right? So CF. And that's it. And we can put this on another line if you want. You can really do anything. All right, so if we play this now, we're going to hear those entire, that entire first riff, those 16 notes, except instead of using, uh, let's see, earlier we used 32 lines, right, because we had 16 play methods, 16 sleep methods, and then when we uh, created our kind of personalized methods, our personalized Ruby methods, we chopped that down to maybe five, to 19, right? So we chopped a lot of the, the length off, and now we've actually done it in one line. You, can, you know, you can put this all in one line if you really want to. And if we press play, we hear, and that's it. That's that's the first riff. So if we go back to here to our sheet music. So. That's what we just did is all the way up here, this entire first line of, uh, of notes, we created that in one line of code. Um, that is going to be repeated down here, you see, in this third line. But in between, we have a slight deviation from that. We have, instead of an F note here, we have an E note. So the high notes are still C's, that's still C5. But then down here, instead of F4, this is going to be E4. You can see it's, it's in the same... No, it's, it's, I'm sorry, it's almost in the same uh, pattern. So the first eight notes here are exactly the same as the first eight notes of our F pattern. Um, but then, and you see here, it goes down, up at the end, down, up. But then over here, uh, in the F pattern, remember we ended with uh, the high note, with C, and then F, the low note. But over here in the E pattern, it just does low and then high again. So the first eight notes of the E pattern are exactly the same as the second eight notes of the E pattern. So if we really wanted to, we could do this uh, in two different play pattern time methods and have the E notes just repeat twice, right? We could just do an eight note play pattern time method that repeats twice instead of with the F pattern, we had to write out all 16 notes. So let's go back and modify our pattern. 
in a bit. Got to comment this out. How are we doing on time? We're good. Awesome. We actually have a great question. Yeah. Um, these def methods look similar to functions in Python. Exactly. Can you use one inside another, for example? Um, hey guys. Uh, yeah. So um, you know, every programming language has a concept of a method or a function, and you know, you kind of use them interchangeably. So in JavaScript, they're called functions, and Ruby and Python, we generally refer them as methods. Um, and you can build, you can call one method from one inside another. And kind of methods are a way to create a unit of work or a named piece of code or a sequence of code so that you can easily repeat it. Um, so that you don't have to constantly refer to the literal lines in that, me in that method, but rather just evoke it whenever you need it. Cool. Um, so, right, let's make that, uh, that E pattern now. So we can, uh, we can copy and paste what we did with the F pattern. Excuse me. And remember the first the first eight notes. So I believe that's up to let's see. That's one more. So this the first eight notes right there. Um, these ones are going to be the same, but everywhere there was an F note before is going to be an E note. So we can just go ahead and switch all those out and leave the C notes because the high notes are still C's. And then down here we can do the same thing. Except there's that difference here. Instead of going C and then E, uh, as, as the F pattern did, it actually goes E and then C. And remember, we said that if you wanted, you could just do an eight, uh, sorry, uh, an eight note play pattern time uh, method because you see the top and the bottom here. The first and the last eight notes are exactly the same. So yeah, actually, let's do that. All right, well, first, let's, let's run it like this. And then we can, we can split it up and show you how to to do some very simple looping in, uh, in Ruby and Sonic Pi. So if we play this, remember, this is what, let's just put that on the same line, ease. So this is what the F pattern sounds like. And then this is what the E pattern sounds like. And if we want, we can do them back to back. There you go. So we've already created like the core riff from the first part of uh, of such great heights, and look at how simple it was. I mean, it took us what thirty minutes, something like that, twenty-five minutes. And just to jump in, you know, I think what's uh, really important to kind of notice about the process of programming is that this is how we'd actually approach solving this problem. Um, in that there's a progression. We don't necessarily start with exactly how we want it to end up. You kind of slowly discover, you know, I think building things first, like having built out all the notes first manually, kind of, you know, getting the riffs, hearing the sound, and then slowly what we call refactoring, which is really just a fancy word for editing. So that you're taking this one idea that you've expressed however way possible, and then you kind of reshape it and mold it and play with it and kind of refine the contour. But there's this assumption, I think, amongst beginners that the process of programming is getting everything right in your head and then sitting down and then just typing it all out. Um, but I think it's really more of kind of an ad hoc process of like improvisation. Um, and that thing is what you're seeing Gabe do is it's not just for teaching's sake, but really this is how we progress through our thoughts and kind of clarify and crystallize these ideas in music or in code. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, there are so many different ways to do this. I mean, we've gone through three ways now. You could you could make 16 play pattern time methods if you want. You could uh, you could you know what you could do instead of having sleep 0 0.5 for each of these, you could do sleep one, and then you could just double the BPM, and you would get the same result. So there are a million different ways to create this, and I think that's one of the awesome things about code, and that's you know, one of the things I'm continuing to learn is that there's no right way. Like there might be a pretty way, there might be an efficient way, there might be uh, Avi's way, there might be my way, there might be Nicole's way, but like, they're just, they're, they all get the job done. And how you do it, you know, it could be a matter of personal preference, it could be your style, whatever, like, my kind of, my aesthetic for creating uh, such great heights and the kind of the, the iterations that I went through, with, I wanted to make it as small as possible, I wanted it in as few lines of code as possible. And I remember I, I actually, I tweeted at Avi, like, I cut the code in half because I figured out arrays, right? Like when I figured out this play pattern time method, 
it took me from like 500 lines of code down to like 260 or something. And it was the coolest feeling in the world, like just realizing that there was this implementation I could be using that would make it so much more efficient. And that's what I wanted. And it just, I hadn't been doing it wrong before. I'd just been doing it differently and seeing that there was a different way, what I thought was a better way. Um, and, and knowing now that there are probably 10 better ways to be doing this. Like I'm, you know, there are people out there, like the guy who created uh, the aerodynamic code for Sonic Pi probably knows way more than I do. The, there's this guy I saw just last night who made a dub techno song and he's doing it live, you know, just like coding the first he starts with the bass drum and then he brings the, or the, the kick, sorry. And then he brings like the hi-hats in and brings like the first synth in. And it's just, it's the coolest like additive process. And he, he could do this, you know, maybe he could do it in like three letters. I, I don't know. Like there, there are so many different ways to be doing this. This is just one of them. So if you guys come up with a different way, it doesn't mean it's wrong. It's, you know, it's probably better than what I'm doing. It's just different. It's your way. Um, okay. So let's see. So now I think, oh, right. We were going to show that we can duplicate this. Yeah, we can loop this. One, two, three, yeah. Can you clarify play pattern timed and what that is? Yeah, sure. So, so play pattern timed is uh, another kind of core Sonic Pi method. So, like, just like the play method, um, just like the play method, uh, will play a note. Right. Every time we click run, Sonic Pi reads that and it says play. Okay, I know the word play. When I see the word play, it means play whatever argument is passed in. So, in this case, the argument is F four. If we make it C5, like our other note, it'll play a C5, right? So it's like, it's just, it's a method, it's a defined um, kind of like sequence of events that happens, right? When Sonic Pi, when you run your, your code, Sonic Pi recognizes the play method, recognizes the, the argument attached to it, and then plays that note. Like it, it gets input, right? The input is the F4. And then the kind of the, the return value, the output is the sound that you hear. Like that. Um, so play pattern time is the same idea. It just accepts a much more intricate uh, input, and it, it like it goes through a lot more of, a, of an involved process to play everything, right? So when you when you have when Sonic Pi reads this, it reads play pattern time. Okay, I know what that word means. That word means that I'm going to receive two things. First. Uh, I'm going to receive this list of notes, right? In this case, it's 16 notes. And then there's going to be a comma. And then the next thing that I'm going to receive is a list of sleep values. Um, and I'm go if, you know, if there aren't as many, like there aren't 16 sleep values here, there's just one. So I know that I have to take that one sleep value and in between every one of these notes, I have to sleep for 0 0.5. Um, and it's just, it's it's a core method in Sonic Pi. Um, so yeah, is that Answer it. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So yeah. So let's go back to that E method, and I'm calling these by the the first letter here, by the way. So the first note. So this is our E method down here. This is our F method up here. Um, the the song goes F method, right? These 16 notes, and then E method. These 16 notes, and then it loops back and goes back to F method, and it actually it does that for the first. 30 measures, so each one of those methods is two measures long. The measures are divided by these uh, these breaks here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then it does that five more times, right? So 30 measures total. But, so uh, these eight notes are identical to these eight notes, so we don't actually have to uh, type them out again. We can just, we can do it once, and then we can use this cool uh, Ruby iterator called times, or times do, right? And so we want to do this two times. And Ruby, I, so I studied Java um, for a little bit when I was in school, and Java required a million lines to do what is super simple in Ruby. In Ruby, if you want to do something two times, you just type two times do, and then you put an end at the end because you need to end the loop. And and that's it. And then it's going to do this two times. So it'll sound exactly like it did before. Let's actually, yeah, let's compare. All right, you know what? Here, we'll just play the F. So this is going to sound exactly like it did when we had a 16-note E pattern, except there's only eight notes now, and we're just doing it twice because it's the same. Cool. So we have 
have a question about playing chords yeah. and playing the bass clap and the treble clap at the same time. How do you think you'll do that? Okay. Um, sure. Okay. So, so there's no, there aren't really clefs in Sonify. Like for for those of you who don't know, um, clefs are like when you, when you look at piano music, right? You have uh, like a right hand and a left hand. Someone else could be giving a much better demo. I was a clarinet player, which is all uh, treble clef. But they're basically, a clef is just like, when you look at the musical staff, you look at here, this symbol means treble clef. And usually, you would see a bass clef symbol down here, which is like a little thing that looks like this. It's like a, whatever, a moon with two dots in it. Um, and so bass clef, I'm sure there's a, a more technical definition, but I always kind of learned it as like bass clef being lower notes and treble clef being higher notes. Um, the notes on a treble clef, I know. The notes on a bass clef, I don't. So they, they're array the same where they go from A through G, um, like A, B, C, D, E, F, G. But uh, on a treble clef, for instance, the C note is up here uh, and then uh, one line below. And on a bass clef, I think it's, I think it's here. I think it's in between the second uh, space, but anyway, uh, so Sonic Pi doesn't really deal with clefs. Sonic Pi just kind of deals with the absolute note values. So, like, if you have a uh, a bass, like a, a, a treble clef C, it's going to be a C in Sonic Pi. It'll just probably be in a lower octave. So, like, if you want to, if you want to uh, play. Uh, a low C, you could just do like C, actually you probably have to be able to hear that from the speaker. Let's do a C3. Oops. Sorry, I forgot to comment this out. Yeah. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but it's, it's like a, it's a lower C note. Um, and so instead of like, instead of kind of airing it into uh, like a treble clef method and a bass clef method or splitting that up into like two play pattern time methods, you really just do it all at once, and so you would have, you know, like if you have your uh, your melody going from treble clef, like going F4, C5, and then going down into lower notes, you would just put the lower notes right in here, um, and it would just, it would play them in sequence. Um, playing at the same time, though, that is a great question. So in Sonic Pi, uh, it reads the your code from top to bottom, right? And so when you have play pattern timed up at the top, and then this, uh, you know, our, our E pattern. You have the F pattern and the E pattern. It knows, okay, I encounter the F pattern first, so I play that, and then I encounter the E pattern second, so I play that after. If you want to do it at the same time, um, there are a few different ways you can do it. One of them is by creating what's called a live loop, um, and let's call this F pattern. And what a live loop does is it just it takes the code inside of it and it just continuously loops it until you tell it to stop. So we'd have to have another one down here. And what this is going to do is it's going to play both of these at the exact same time. So we're going to hear F and E4, and then we're going to hear C5 doubled, and then F and E4, F and E4, and so on. Yeah, it's not that pleasant. <laughs> um, but yeah, so live loop is one of the ways you can do that. And live loop is kind of cool. That's actually, that's how the aerodynamic guy uh, created his song. That's how like Sam Aaron does live coding, which is like he's actually up on stage creating uh, like techno kind of DMB music as he goes. And he uses live loops for that. So he'll like create, uh, he'll create a kick drum. Kick. Do um, sample three. Let's do eta. And let's do sleep zero point five. Okay. So when we play this, we're gonna hear our F pattern with a kick drum on top of it. All right, that's a little too aggressive. Yeah. So <laughs> stop dancing. So uh, that's that. Okay. That's how you play, uh, you know, two sounds at the same time, two different instruments at the same time, anything like that. Um, another way you can do it is with in thread, and what that means is that your your computer is going to do. Your computer has 
multiple threads, right? That's, that's how that works. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of, you know, we're getting pretty deep Inside baseball, into yeah. like Sonic <laughs> Pi here, but these ideas like play time, play pattern timed, in thread, live loop, what they are is what's called in programming a DSL or domain specific language. Um, and if we open up the help in Sonic Pi, which is really cool once you download it, there kind of are these tutorials built into it that explain to you, like these, these methods like play and play pattern time, they're basically what Sam Aaron has done is built a lot of Ruby methods that abstract or automate a lot of the common work you need to do in generating music. And as Gabe was saying, there's like a hundred different ways to do the same thing. Um, is this your, yeah. this is the original, yeah. So if we wanted to actually hear how all of Postal Service sounds, um, you kind of see this is, this is what a complex arrangement of sounds using like all of the fanciness of Sonic Pi, like, you know, adding effects like reverb and slicers, changing the synths, um, you know, kind of arranging the notes in certain patterns so that they play in good sequences with each that, other. That right there, that is right. what we're coding. That's just the, like the final version of it, where right. and it has a pan slicer on it, so it's panning from side to side and all these other effects. Right, he's even going going further and he's separating the data of the notes from the actual playing it. So over here, what he's really doing is building these arrays, which are lists of data of what notes and what timings, and then he's sending that data through Ruby loops to these kind of uh, complex methods, but if we kind of run it, you'll hear this is what the end product sounds like. It's a good track. I like it when the when the like grr, like the rrr comes in. So uh, we're gonna play it till then because you can't fast forward. Okay. Right there, that's the coolest. Yeah. Yeah, the drums kind of... Well, the, so the, the drums actually aren't going to come in right now because uh, remember I said earlier that Sonic Pi has a, a kind of a length limit. So actually, I just split the drums off into a separate buffer, which is buffer two. Yeah, and so and like I was like, this, this is the kind of the drum matrix, right? Of yeah. The, of the yeah. Kind of, have you ever used a, like a, a beat machine, right? This would basically be on note, on note, off note, right? Yeah. Things yeah. Like that. So it goes like off, 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 clap, off, yeah. off, 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 clap. Um, so with that, I think we're going to wrap up, um, and thank you so much, Gabe, for uh, doing that. That was awesome. Um, I hope and, that was you know, helpful. Again, like, it's really just about playing. Like, I think one thing you have to realize when you're learning a code, whether it's in music or building apps or just even basic Ruby, it should be fun. It should be playful. You should be experimenting and discovering and intimacy with these ideas and these concepts. It's totally okay to not know them all at once, as long as you're willing to kind of step outside your comfort zone and explore um, these ideas kind of as it that's what makes it fun. Um, so I'm sure we have a ton of questions. We don't have a lot of time. Um, Just one quick one about if Flatiron School is like a college or university and what qualifications you need to apply or join. Here. Sure. Um, so Flatiron School is not a college or university, <laughs> and we do not uh, grant degrees. Um, uh, but we are a school. We have classrooms and teachers. We also have an online program. We have an application process, so you do have to apply to get into the school. School both a, in a person very competitive application process. It's pretty competitive. But the thing that we look for most is really just passion and grit. We want people that are really excited about being programmers and are willing to persist through a pretty hard journey. Um, I do think that everyone can learn a program. It is hard. It's not. It's not easy. Um, it is a little difficult, uh, but you know, what we really want are people that are not going to quit because they really love it and they really want to be great at it. Um, and if you guys have any other questions about um, the music stuff here or Sonic Pi or even just programming, um, I'm going to add my email address to this list so that you can email me. So I'm Avi at flatironschool.com and I'll forward most of the Sonic Pi questions to Gabe because um, he's way better at it than I am at this point. Yeah, and if you guys, if you want, uh, you know, if you start to create something and you want some input or you want to create something together, anything like that, um, I'll make sure that my like my Twitter and GitHub and that kind of stuff gets gets thrown into the uh, the after email. And yeah. please hit me up because I I like doing this stuff. It's fun. Yeah, it's just I'm never going to be the postal service, but if I can create something that sounds kind of like that and learn how to code at the same time. That's that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, and also maybe for the next one, we'll, you know, we'll open up a survey, and you guys can vote for uh, <laughs> vote for what songs you want us to do. Because yeah. I, I've been doing mostly Taylor Swift. I'm happy that Gabe has brought in some of his <laughs> electronic music, um, but maybe we could do some other great songs too. Yeah. Anything. Um, all right. So uh, we're gonna send out an email with some discounts to our HTML and CSS course. We also have a free Ruby course online that we'll link to also if you want to learn more about the language that Sonic Pi is built in. 
Um, and after that, you know, just be in touch. Come to more webinars. Tweet us if you enjoyed this. And uh, again, thank you to Gabe for that awesome uh, demo and Nicole for arranging everything. All right. Have a great afternoon, guys. Thanks, guys. Bye.